but you bought an old house and it's full of rubbish and what do you do with it? How about you renovate it? Today, we're gonna talk about our newest renovation, our newest project and exciting adventure in house remodeling, 115 Ming. Don't forget to like and subscribe right down below because I make a new video every single week all about eating, breathing, sleeping, living, renovating houses in Warrensburg, Missouri, and you're gonna wanna get notified. Also, my contact information is right down there. If you have any questions, if you wanna know, oh my gosh, Eva, how many cockroaches were in this house? A billion. <laughs> Do not hesitate to reach out and shoot me a text. I love talking to people. Today, my friends, we are gonna talk about our newest project, our newest, I'm not gonna say house flip because we're not gonna sell it, but our newest renovation, 115 Ming. Hopefully, we haven't seen any cockroaches in quite a while, but it would totally be my luck right now if one just like dropped out and landed in my hair, and you can see what a big baby I am because it's one thing, I can do spiders. I can do snakes, I love snakes actually, but cockroaches, they're like my kryptonite. <sighs> So, here's our house, and as you can see, our house is literally a hop, skip, and a jump away from campus. That's literally campus, that big building right there. So it's a 45 second walk to campus, and if I then just turn in the opposite direction, that street right there, that's where all of the restaurants and bars are. So this location is amazing. It's literally directly in between the bars and campus. I would have loved to live in this house, well, after we finished it as a college student. It would have been perfect. is, did you see it on the market or did I see it on the market? I saw it on the market and we drove by it yeah. a few times. We were actually looking for an Airbnb, which yes. we're not going to make this an Airbnb. No. But we were at the time looking for an Airbnb close to downtown. You'll see this house is about as close to downtown Lawrenceburg and the college campus for a single family as the you can get. The location is amazing. The location is amazing. I could throw a football and hit Starbucks uh, on campus. Yeah. Same thing for the bars downtown, so it's, it's that close. Great location, um, great bones, and a great house, great limestone foundation. It was just. <laughs> when we first drove by, I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, we just. And the saw location all, was great, but. <laughs> all those window units that, that were in the, that, that, the AC window, I think there were four or five yeah. sticking out of the windows, and half the windows are broken. And it was listed, so it was listed at 175, and I called the agent who was listing this house. And I said, hey, we're thinking about putting an offer in. And the agent was like, well, he's taking it off the market tomorrow, so you better get an offer in. And 175 was just way too high knowing the condition. So you were like, let's just offer 135 and see what they say. Thankfully, they took it. Yeah, so the house was hard to show as it was. They were only yes. allowing showing on Saturdays. and. I really believe that was a lot due to just how bad the tenants were, not necessarily being mismanaged, but how bad the tenants were in the beginning. Yeah. Um, there was a hoarder upstairs, they each had two or three pets, hard to access, and I think it was more of a, out of embarrassment, I guess you could say. Um, so we made them an offer, 40,000 low. We were expecting a counter offer. 
but we also knew the house had been on the market six months and we didn't know where the counter offer was going to come. We were pretty firm at 135 and we got it at 135. And yeah. fortunately for us, when we were seeing it a week later, uh, the owner met us here and uh, we actually bought the house right next door um, on the spot from him as well. Um, he had it for sale, but it was not on market. So we ended up getting both houses for 240. Yeah, it's awesome. So the first walkthrough experience, I actually only walked through this house one time before it was cleaned up quite a bit because after walking through it, I was like, mm -mm, nope, I'm done. I, I don't do cockroaches. I have this giant massive fear of them falling out of the ceiling and getting stuck in my hair because it happened one time and it scarred me for life. So back to the story. When we initially did the walkthrough, we started going upstairs and as soon as it, uh, the owner opened the door, you could just see movement going up the walls. And it was thousands and thousands of cockroaches scurrying away from the light. And it really just kind of got worse from there. So I, I knew that I was excited about the property. I knew that you could make this beautiful. I just wasn't gonna come back into it until all the books were gone. And they're mostly gone now. It's, uh, if you see some of the B-roll shots upstairs, you'll still see some dead cockroaches here and there, but we've had the house empty now for, I wanna say four weeks, mm -hmm. going on a, a, a month, and every day I come in and just spot kill cockroaches. We've had it sprayed two or three times. We've treated it with borax. Mm -hmm. All the things you need to do to, and German cockroaches are no joke. They're one of the fastest, I think, um, reproducing species of cockroaches yes. known. It's like a, 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 a 40 day time from when they can go and, and have eggs and be full grown cockroaches. So yeah. it's like a basically fighting an uphill battle until you get the house empty. And that was challenge number one, as it is with the most rentals or, or flips like this, getting an old flip clean and empty uh, is always the key in the very beginning so you can see what you're really working with. So here we are in our new Ming Street house. This is 115 Ming. And I have my lovely and wonderful co-host who I have put to work doing all of the majority of this construction because he's so good at it. And he oh, has, well he is, and he has such a wonderful vision for this house. So I'm gonna ask him a bunch of questions about it. And he's gonna tell you all about what we're doing to this really cool historical home on Ming Street in Warrensburg. So, handsome and wonderful assistant, tell me about what you're doing to this dining room and what's your vision for this room? So, like a lot of these houses built in 1925 era, still laid in plaster, the house had not been updated at all. Um, this is obviously not my first full update project. However, getting into knob and tube and asbestos we know what we're getting into. So big picture, we're coming in and replacing all the knob and tube in the house, replacing all the asbestos ducting. This house didn't even have an AC system. So we're getting AC in the house and we're doing all new windows. Those are our big three budget items, I guess you could say, is replacing all the windows, the knob and tube, and the HVAC. So all we have left to do here is remove and terminate this asbestos ducting, which is feeding a bathroom upstairs. It's gonna go away. Our plumbing is actually being moved from the bathroom upstairs to make a corner post here, and then we're gonna box in that corner post so it looks you know, very natural. Then we're gonna rebuild these stairs as well. So it's gonna be an open concept dining room that flows into the kitchen. So when we first started this process, and Will told me that he was gonna take down this wall, he was gonna expose the stairs to the basement, he was gonna expose basically so you could see all the way through. I didn't quite see the vision, I just saw dollar signs and I was like, Oh my gosh, he's a crazy man. But now looking at it, it's pretty amazing. So tell me about the process of opening this up. How difficult was it to pull everything out? Well, it's really like surgery, um, demolition surgery, I guess you could say. So big picture, knocking down a wall that you know is not load bearing. First thing we wanted to do is go in there and expose where those two by fours are at. So we come in, make a big hole in the wall, somewhere in this area here, and we start kind of chiseling out small sections at a time, pulling the lathe out, pulling the plaster out, getting all the rubbish out of the house, and that eventually opens it up so we can really see. So tell me what you're gonna do with this interesting large box. With this area, again, not heated and cool, and this was a really good opportunity to essentially make a buffer's pantry and remove a bunch of windows. 
in this back room alone, and Evo will do a walk around and show you in a little bit, there were 13 windows. So we're able to remove all 13 windows and we're gonna make that a finished, heated, and cool butler's pantry. I really love these old kitchen cabinets. I actually, it was one of the things I kind of like fought to keep instead of putting in new cabinets because I really love how tall these top cabinets are. It just looks very vintage. Well, it is vintage, they're original. And I just thought they were very unique to the house and it gives it character versus just buying new cabinets and putting them in. Yeah, so what we're gonna do on these, we're not gonna keep the cabinets. I'm gonna take off some of this grill stuff. So mainly this right here, I'm gonna take those out. We are gonna swap the hardware out. Um, this is, I don't think, original hardware. It it's match, not. Which mm -hmm. makes me believe it's not original. So, but the cabinets are in great shape, actually. There was no water damage. There was no wood rot that I saw. All the doors were still aligned properly for the most part. All the shelves um, have this, you know, paper on them that people put on over time to hide you know, stains or whatever. We are gonna strip all that, take it all back down to the wood and then paint all these insides of the cabinets. We're probably gonna match these with whatever accent color we're doing on the fireplace, whatever that may be, an olive or a green of some sort or a navy. That's kind of what we're thinking. So, and then we're gonna redo the countertops. It's gonna go butcher block countertops as well. Sink's easily saveable. Um, I love that sink, it's so cool. Cast iron sink, we'll end up cleaning it up. They make these uh, refinishing kits for cast iron bathtubs or ceramic bathtubs, we're gonna use the same kind of, uh, essentially, watertight epoxy on this sink to make it look really nice and new. So, follow me around. Yeah, good view. So right now we're in the kitchen going into what will be a butler's pantry. So, you notice out here, a few things that we didn't like with the house first. Flip it around to show the panel. You okay? They did a really, I'm gonna say it how it is. They did a horrible job with this. Why would you ever put an electrical panel here? It makes absolutely no sense. It's out of code, seven ways from Sunday. It makes no sense. So we're gonna fix it the right way. Uh, again, we are gonna leave it out here, but we're dropping this box out, dropping the panel down so it's accessible, boxing the panel in. And if you spin around, this room is not heated and cooled currently. Uh, half the windows are broken. They're all old. It's cold out here, the floor is not insulated, there's a thousand things wrong, but we're gonna make this a butler's pantry. So this is gonna go to a true exterior door. Their driveway is next to us, which is gonna make it easy for kids, you know, whoever's renting the place, to bring groceries in and out right through this butler's pantry, you know, basically. Cabinets all along here and then right behind you, think, where this old bathroom door is at. Heard pretend it's not there for a second. This old window is gonna go away and we're gonna end up having a door threshold here. So there's not gonna be a door, it's gonna be an open threshold and that's gonna go into what currently is the laundry room, but we're gonna make that laundry room open up this direction versus the master bedroom. And half of that's gonna be a master bedroom walk-in closet. Ceilings. We dropped all the lathe and plaster, which makes it measurably easier to rewire knob and tube. It's much easier to fish the knob and tube down through the walls if you have exposed, you know, the exposed ceilings. So we're actually going to leave these exposed. We're not going to go back in and drywall these. Reason being, we're able to achieve. It's hard to see with the camera and the current angle, but with an American Foursquare, there's these essentially four squares of living space on the main level and up, upstairs there's smaller living spaces where the bedrooms and bathrooms at which creates these really cool pockets um, of essentially vaulted ceilings with your floor joists and rafters still exposed so what we're going to do and we've done it in the other rooms clean them up we come in and again it's like demolition surgery you pull all the little nails that held all the lathe in clean up all the cobwebs cut all the knob and tube back remove all the insulators get all the crap out of the ceiling that you want. And once you have it cleaned up the way you want, you can then come in around, like you see, we have not cleaned up all this broken lathe here still. I've been working room to room, haven't gotten to this room yet. But we come in and take one by six MDF board and we trim out the top of that plaster and then actually make plaster um, and lathe washers. So if you ever get bigger spots that are coming off the wall or are loose, it's these plastic washers that'll hold it in place so it doesn't fall off the wall. Nice. And then we're shutting this 
we're closing this off, right? So this is. Well, this is going to stay an open door, but we're okay. dropping a wall mm -hmm. here, running a long way through this room. Okay. And this is going to end up being the new closet to the master bedroom. All these windows go away. They're not needed. They're frivolous, and we have way too many in this house. The original window bid was eighteen thousand dollars <laughs> just for the windows. Yeah. We've gotten that down to seven thousand dollars from eighteen thousand dollars, going from fifty-one windows to twenty-eight. Twenty-eight windows. So, yeah. Yeah, we're dropping a wall here. This will be a closet. On the other side of that wall is going to be where the laundry room's at. You can see the washer and dryer hookups are already in here. Mm -hmm. This is where the laundry room was currently at, but you had to walk through the master bedroom to get in the laundry room, which again makes no sense on the layout. What makes more sense, working with what we got, is to open up a threshold into that butler's pantry to make this half of this current room a mudroom slash laundry. Such a good idea because you don't need windows in your closet and you don't need windows in your pantry. That so. actually hurts because you don't have a lot less space to put shelving and hang things. Exactly. So now we're going upstairs and this was the worst part of the house was the upstairs. Um, if you can imagine it, when we first bought this house, it was just a hallway into spooky stairs covered in cockroaches and you went upstairs and it was just god awfully bad. But now after three dumpsters worth of trash and garbage, feces and gosh knows what else, we have this really cool three, what will be a three bedroom upstairs, upstairs. The raid can is on a step that is broken so I'm going to skip it so I don't fall to my death. Ooh, okay. And coming up the stairs, we have one bedroom directly in front of us. We have a, have a bedroom and a bathroom. And then we have uh, what used to be a kitchen, a second kitchen upstairs is now going to be another bedroom. Still has a little bit of a pungent odor up here, but it's so much better. Yeah, the, the odor is definitely in the floorboards. And and there's not much we can do about that right now. We're, well, there's a lot we can do about it. We're not doing anything about it because we're working our way from downstairs up. But eventually, once we sand the floors, continue to clean, that odor will go away. So what we're looking at up here, coming up the stairs, we are actually moving this air return. If you look mm -hmm. here, not a huge deal, but the air return is going to go across the stairs at this side because that air return is blocking the pathway up to essentially walk into what we're going to redo as the master bathroom. Over here is this little currently unusable space. I'm not really sure what we're going to do with this yet. Don't have to do anything with it. Uh, we are going to get rid of the window. The windows, well, I say that if we make this a closet, which is an idea, we could get rid of the window. I think right now we're going to leave the window and just keep this space open. I like the idea of a reading nook. Yeah. Good idea. I'm gonna do old kitchen. So this was built as a bedroom, was repurposed to the kitchen area of what was the upstairs duplex. Uh, we've taken it back or taking it back to what will be a master bedroom again. So mainly just pulling up some floor here to kill off some natural gas lines, to kill off uh, some frivolous water lines that were had the kitchen cabinets, and you can see where the cabinets were in place. Yep, and we'll go back to the master. Mm -hmm. So this area, and there's some great before shots, was a built-in. It was an original built-in cabinet from the 1925 when the house was built. And it had a built-in drawer and some built-in floating shelves you'll see in the photos. It looked, these old houses do settle, of course, and when you settle, you settle around the stairwell first, typically, is where they're going to naturally, or you're going to notice around the stairwell first. We didn't notice any shifting in the stairwell, but we did notice we could not open this drawer. Uh, that was in the built-in. I have no idea how long it had been lodged for, but that's where one of the main roach nests were actually at, is that drawer had not been opened in so long. Roaches had infested this entire built-in. They got into the walls, to the, the ceiling. Everywhere in this area was just completely covered in roaches, and now we've gone in and got them out. It's, you can still see some roach feces here. For you guys who need to know what roach feces look like, that's it. So we're in the upstairs bathroom now and we're getting rid of the original tub. It's going to be a beast to get out of here. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it's really heavy and really 
tiny door frame and tiny stairs, so that's gonna be fun. But we're getting rid of this so we can actually take this window out, wall that in. We are able to match the siding on the exterior of the house for all the windows that we're gonna remove. And we're gonna end up putting a stand-up shower against that wall so we can fit a bigger vanity here. Um, and then we're gonna redo the floors, of course, with tile. You can see some dry rot uh, down to the dining room below. But again, it's expected for having a house this old that was um, mismanaged for decades. I'm just really glad that tub hasn't fallen through the floor with well, how heavy it the floor is. Joist, absolutely. Well, that's it's, good. That but Ooh. yeah, the, there is some rot there for sure. This is the other big bedroom. As you can see, there is just stuff all over the floors. And moving over into this area, a lot of the stuff you see on the floors is was where there was just covered in animal feces. And it's a lot better now, but unfortunately the smell is in the floors. But we'll be able to get that all out. You look so excited. I'm gonna talk <laughs> colors and steam. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the living room. Tell me about what you want this living room to look like. Living room, so in contrast to the master bedroom where the ceilings were still kind of chachi as I would call it, so the hang nails, still had cobwebs, we've cleaned these ceilings up now. So these ceilings, we've cut all the knob and tube back, we've pulled all the nails, cleaned up all the spider, you know, spider webs. Uh, fun fact about this house, 115 Ming, uh, we bought it knowing it was infested with German cockroaches. Um, there's a bunch of photos and we didn't take video, uh, unfortunately, of the cleaning process and the getting rid of all the cockroaches uh, process, but we have tons of photos. I'm sure they'll, they'll be flashing up at any point now. Uh, but tens of thousands of German cockroaches we just obliterated. It was not bad on the main level, but upstairs it was really bad because it was a duplex and the upstairs had a hoarder in it. We removed, I want to say, three 10-yard dumpsters worth of just rubbish, junk, old carpet with pet feces in it, dead roaches, whatever it may be. So now that we're back on the main level, now that we back have the house stabilized, as I would like to call it, we're really looking at, okay, in the living room, it's a big open living room with a really cool fireplace in the back. We're not gonna have that as a functioning fireplace. That used to be a um, coal burning fireplace, not a wood burning fireplace, so we're not gonna repurpose that. We're gonna close it off, put some tile in it, decorate it, and make it a non-functioning cool accent piece. Um, and this room really is where I'm gonna start when I look at putting a theme to the house, figuring out what kind of accent colors work well against the fireplace, versus you'll see in a second, these really awesome double doors that the camera's in between trying to figure out what kind of color scheme we can match those doors with to the fireplace. So right now I'm thinking some kind of dark and little green on the fireplace and doors and maybe like a, a charcoal or even a black on some of the trim uh, with a lighter gray on some of the walls. I think it'll look really good. Hopping. No. Hot pink. Not hot pink. <laughs> Thanks for watching my video you guys and make sure you like and subscribe right down below so you can stay tuned for all the fun progress and I put a new video out every single week, so you're gonna wanna get notified. And also, don't forget that my contact information, like you couldn't forget because I flashed it on the screen, but my contact information is right down below. And I love talking to people. I talk to people from all over the world who are coming to Warrensburg um, or coming to Missouri, and I love it. So if you have any questions, if you're moving here, if you need help finding a place to live, rent, buy, definitely don't hesitate, reach out, give me a call. Till next time, bye.